Yesterday, I did a playthrough with Milotic, and I got my best time yet in Pokemon Emerald. Today, I want to further my explorations of the erratic growth rate. And I think that to do this, Altaria is going to be the perfect Pokemon. For base stats, it has 75 HP, 70 attack, 90 defense, 70 special attack, 105 special defense, and 80 speed. So it's essentially a defensive Pokemon with balanced attacks and pretty good speed. At least pretty good for these solo challenges. By the way, if you're curious what the rules are that I'm playing by, just check the description. Now yesterday with Milotic, I really didn't have a lot of move diversity, but with Altaria, that is not the case. This thing gets a wide range of different types of moves. It starts with Peck, Growl, Astonish, and Sing, and then through Level Up, it gets access to moves like Safeguard, Dragon Breath, Dragon Dance, and Sky Attack, the last of which I will probably not be using. Even though it has a chance to flinch in Generation 3, I don't think that this move is ever going to see serious play in a solo challenge. It's just so bad. Through TMs and HMs, Altaria gets access to Dragon Claw, Hidden Power, Ice Beam, Rain Dance, Solar Beam, Iron Tail, Earthquake, Return, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Aerial Ace, Rest, Thief, Steel Wing, and Fly. Honestly, this move pool is really good. I'm quite happy with it. I do wish we started with a dragon type move. Dragon Rage or Twister would be great. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get through the early portions of the game with Peck and Astonish. Now in Generation 3 damage category, so if a move is special or physical, is determined by the type of the move. In this case, both flying and ghost moves are physical, so I'm gonna be using my attack stat right at the start. Now, dragon type moves deal special damage, so once Altaria gets to level 35 and gets Dragon Breath, then it will have a move that uses its special attack stat. Unfortunately for me, the first gym leader is Roxanne, and that doesn't put Altaria in a great place for the early game. So you might have already checked and saw that I'm using a mild nature today, and that's specifically because I didn't want to use a nature that would lower my attack stat. I wanted to leave my attack stat untouched, and I also wanted to increase my special attack stat so that same type attack bonus dragon type moves will do a lot of damage. Plus, I want to guarantee that I have good damage on moves like Ice Beam and Flamethrower for later on in the game. However, because Flying is a physical type and Altaria gets access to Earthquake and Aerial Ace, I really did not want to cut my physical attack once again. So I ended up going with a Mild Nature so that it lowers Altaria's defense stat. If you didn't know, natures lower a stat by a percentage, and that's why I really didn't want to lower my special defense stat, because I would lose a lot of stat points there, many more than I lose in my defense stat. Alright, so now let's talk about the erratic growth rate. In yesterday's video with my Lodic, I did not struggle against Roxanne and specifically because I had water type moves to defeat her rock types. However, today, with only Peck and Astonish, I think things are looking worse for me. After defeating almost all of the trainers in the early game, I'm at just over 9 minutes of time played, and my Altaria is only level 12. So I'm going to do some grinding in the wild until I level up to level 13 over a damage rounding threshold, and now I'm going to head into Roxanne's gym and take my first attempt at her. Okay, so the strategy here is fairly simple. You all know that I love sleep tactics, and of course, Sing induces sleep. The only downside is that it's 55% accurate, and on the turn that the Pokémon wake up, they do get to attack in Generation 3. If you really crunch the numbers on Sing, it doesn't always yield a benefit to the player. Sometimes it just misses too many times, then you actually get at a deficit than if you were just constantly attacking. But putting the opponent to sleep does allow me to control for some other factors in the fights. So for instance, in the Roxanne fight, if I can put the early Geodudes to sleep enough, then I will get hit by Rock Tomb less and hopefully outspeed the Nose Pass. Also, being able to get by one or two Pokémon while sustaining very little damage is a huge advantage, especially in gym leader battles where their final Pokémon has a held item and they also love to spam potions. In this case, it takes me a long time to knock the Geodude out, and my speed is actually under the Nose Pass's speed. However, that's not even going to matter because it takes me so long to get the Geodude down to orange health, and then Roxanne just uses a potion. Ugh. So yeah, Altaria is definitely not getting through this fight at level 13. It is time to go and do more training. I didn't fight the trainers in the gym because they also have Rock-type Pokémon, but luckily they're at a low enough level that I can defeat them and earn the experience for these battles. After that, I backtrack to the forest, defeat some bug Pokémon, and level up to level 15. 
Okay, so maybe this is going to be the level that I need to defeat Roxanne. Now here I can use a strategy that I used with Delcaddy. Lead with Sing to put the opponent to sleep, and then set up Growl to lower their attack so that when they finally do connect, they do much less damage. This way Altaria can stay alive for longer in the fight and hopefully finish the first Geodude off. And I do finish it off, but I have red health left over. So yeah, this is also going to be a loss. So it is time to head back to the forest and continue my grind. It's really important here to remember that the erratic growth rate levels up very slowly in the early game, and then as the Pokemon's levels get higher and higher, it levels up faster and faster. It actually only requires 600,000 experience points to get to level 100, which is the lowest amount of any growth rate. However, I'm really not seeing any of those advantages now. Anyways, let's continue with the grind. After a while, I decided to head north of Rustboro City, because up here you can find Abras. I actually find one, throw a Great Ball, it breaks out and flees. And then immediately after that, I find a second Abra. I was like, great. I throw a Pokeball at this one because that's all I have left. And uh, oh, it breaks out again. Are you kidding me? And while I'm continuing my training, another Abra shows up. I throw a Pokeball at this one and finally I catch it. So this is one of the advantages of having a Pokemon that needs a lot of training for Roxanne. You have time to search this grass patch because you need to be knocking out Pokemon anyways. And then you can catch an Abra while doing this and use it to teleport around the map, saving a few seconds later on in the playthrough. Honestly, I haven't calculated exactly how much time this saves, but it's probably not more than one to two minutes. Still, I'll take what I can get when my timer is approaching 25 minutes and I haven't even beaten the first gym leader. Now at level 18, I am doing more damage to the Geodude, but still not very much. I'm mostly relying on critical hits here to do a lot. However, in this case, I get very good sing luck, and I actually do manage to take out the second Geodude for the first time. However, I have 8 hit points left over for the Nose Pass. I go for Sing, but because I have minus 6 speed, it moves first, hits Rock Tomb, and Altaria faints. Okay, so I head to the Rust Turf Tunnel, because here I can knock out Whismur for HP EVs. I just want to make a quick clarification about what I said about the EV system in my Delcaddy video. You do not gain one stat point for every four points invested in the EV. That only happens when your Pokemon is at level 100. The number of stat points that you gain actually depends on your level. However, gaining these attack EVs now is still a benefit, because it's going to make my HP maybe one or two stats higher, which can only help against Roxanne. Okay, level 20, please be what I need. This time I'm able to get by them and move on to the Nose Pass with green health remaining. Also, I haven't consumed my Orenberry yet, which is perfect. Because I haven't taken too many Rock Tombs, I outspeed, sleep works, which is perfect, so now it's time to use Growl. Unfortunately, Nose Pass wakes up right away, but it just goes for Harden. Like, why? This allows me to put it back to sleep and use Growl three more times, taking it down to minus four attack. Okay, so now it is time to use Astonish. Nose Pass wakes up right away, goes for Rock Tomb, and this lowers my speed so that I'm tied with the Nose Pass. Luckily, I win the coin flip, put Nose Pass back to sleep, and now I have to use Peck because I don't have any more PP left over on Astonish. Okay, so I think that I've got this. It's just gonna take a while. However, then I get a critical hit with Peck, which takes the Nose Pass down to orange health. And because Roxanne already burnt her potions on the Geodudes, I'm able to slowly whittle it down and eventually take the victory. So, finally, at over 33 minutes of time on the clock, Altaria has beat Roxanne. This badge gives me a 10% boost to my attack stat. You can see this in the bottom left by the grayed out badge icon behind the attack label. Alright, so let's move on. I'm gonna fight Brendan just south of the city. I don't think he's gonna be a problem. I should mention here that I made him take Mudkip. Honestly, Altaria is really good against any of the starter Pokemon, and I felt like Mudkip was the best one for him to take because I don't have super effective damage against it. Whereas Flying Moves are super effective against both the Trico line and the Blaziken line. Before I head to Dufort Island, I catch myself the HM users I'll need for the playthrough. By the way, Meryl is fantastic for this. It can learn Strength, Surf, Waterfall, and Dive. I also catch a Wingle for Fly, and a Zigzagoon for Rock Smash and Cut. Okay, so let's take a boat trip to Duford Island now and progress with the playthrough. The first thing I do every time I get off the boat is I head into this house and pick up the Silk Scarf. For Altaria, this isn't going to be useful immediately because I don't get access to any good normal type moves for quite a while. However, keep it in the back of your mind because it is going to be useful later on. After that, I do battle with some trainers on the beach. I level up to level 21 here, where I have the chance to learn Safeguard. I think at this point, Growl is not 
particularly useful, so I'm going to forget it in favor of this move. However, I don't think either is going to get a lot of play. I drop off the letter to Steven, do a little bit of extra training in the Duford gym, and now it's time to face Brawly. I got a lot of feedback on my Tropius video for not using Peck, so don't worry, I'm going to make sure to use that move today. In this case, it doesn't one-hit the Machop, but it just goes for bulk up, then Brawl uses a Super Potion, which is actually pretty good, I don't want him to be using it on the Makuhita. Even with its defenses raised, I'm still doing more than half, so Peck is able to two-shot the Machop. Moving on to the Metatite, I get an easy one-hit with Peck, Altaria levels up to level 22, and then Brawly sends in his Ace. Alright, so how much damage is Peck going to do? And the answer is a lot. It takes it down just above red health. I get hit with Vital Throw, which does almost no damage. Makuhita eats its Citrus Berry, healing it back into green, but that isn't enough to save it from my next peck. So that is an easy second badge for Altaria, which is a really nice contrast to Roxanne. Alright, so let's take the second portion of the boat ride over to Slateport Beach. Here I am going to collect some hidden items, first is the ether, after that I make sure to talk to this tuber to pick up the soft sand, it will be useful to boost earthquakes damage later on. After that I decide to do some additional training. I think that I'm going to need level 30 or higher to defeat Watson, so I should put the time in now. Anytime you can prevent yourself from backtracking in one of these playthroughs, you will save real time, at the expense of course of some game time. Do remember, the best way to get the lowest game time is always minimum battles, but it usually takes so many resets. I finish off the rocket grunts in the museum, I make a trip to the mart, I always do this now by the way, I really want to buy paralyze heals before I head out onto the next route as I mentioned yesterday. After that I stop by the trickmaster's house collecting a rare candy, and now it is time to take on the rival. Here's the thing though, I should probably upgrade my moveset at this point, astonish is pretty useless, so I'm going to teach Steelwing in its place. You might wonder why not replace Safeguard, but I'm saving that specifically for Watson to counteract Thunder Wave. Okay, so now let's face the rival. Up first is Lombre. Of course, Peck makes the most sense here. I knock it out in a single hit. Next is Slugma. I go for Peck, and it's going to be a two hit. Unfortunately, I do get hit by Yawn, and that means I fall asleep right after the Marsh Tomp comes out. Okay, so let's just hope that I wake up. After all, this thing can only hit me with Water Gun right now, and it's doing very little damage. I wake up hit peck, and then it uses bide, I click a little bit too fast, hit another peck which allows it to store energy, and at that point I was like, maybe I'll get the KO, like it looks like it might be a roll, I go for peck, it doesn't KO, Marsh Tomp unleashes energy, and Altaria survives. I eat my Orenberry and finish his ace off on the next turn. So with that, I've made it to Mauville City. Yesterday, I forgot to pick up the Acro Bike until later in the playthrough, so today I'm going to remember it right away. After that, I do training in the surrounding area where I say no to learning Mist. This move is very rarely useful in solo playthroughs. I pick up the Macho Brace just in case I need it, and then I level up and learn Takedown in the place of Peck. This flying type move is just really not going to be very useful against Watson, and normal type damage will will be far better. All the training in the surrounding areas brings Altaria up to level 32, and I think now I am ready to take on Watson. Okay, so one thing I wasn't really keenly aware of is the fact that electric types resist steel type moves, so steel wing is not going to be that useful. I set up safeguard on the first turn just to prevent myself from being paralyzed, and now I'm going to have to use takedown, but the disadvantage of this move is the fact that it likes to miss. It misses turn one, and then it misses turn two again. So I'm getting chipped away at by Spark. I finally knock the Voltorb out, take recoil damage, and I've lost over one third of my health by the time I knock out Watson's second Pokemon. Because of the misses, he sends in Magneton next, right when my safeguard fades, which is so annoying. So I'm going to have to reestablish this on the turn that he goes for Thunder Wave. Actually, I think that that worked out very well for me. Now it's going to take a long time to knock the Magneton out, so I want to go for Sing to put it to sleep. Unfortunately I miss, get hit by Sonic Boom, eat my Orenberry, which I was using by the way because I knew I had Safeguard. I do put the Magneton to sleep, and now it's time to start using Steel Wing to knock it out, but I am doing 
so little damage to this thing. Even though takedown would do more damage, I really don't want to use it just because it's going to deal recoil damage every time I hit the magneton. And so the situation that's playing out is I just can't do enough damage, and even if I am able to get amazing sleep block against the magneton, it's just not going to cut it because Watson does have super potions. So in the end, Alteria does end up getting one loss here. Okay, so while this footage of the next fight plays out, I'm just going to replace Watson's team once again with the move pool so that we can examine it to see what Alteria's options might be against him. I think most of you are probably looking at Flamethrower and thinking that that is the option. It will likely one or two hit the Magneton. Here's the thing, to get Flamethrower, you need 4,000 coins, and while I do have the ability to get the coin case at this point, 4,000 coins is 80,000 Poké Dollars. And at this point in the early game, I just have not saved up nearly enough money. Going into this playthrough, I actually tried to save as much money as was possible in the early game, sell like every item that I picked up, and then try to buy Flamethrower, but uh, no. It just doesn't work that way. I think in the future I may eventually find a way to get one TM before Watson, but it's going to involve like getting Thief and then going back around Petalburg Woods and like thiefing some nuggets and then selling like all the berries you collect, every item using no TMs, which would mean that I wouldn't get Steelwing. Anyways, in this case, that's just not an option for me today. Okay, so let's talk again about the footage against Watson. I really am not going to be able to do this. In my fourth fight against him, I get the Magneton down to red health. Altaria is at orange health, but then Watson uses his super potion, and that really solidifies to me the fact that I am going to need to do more training. Okay, so let's head out to this patch of grass where I found my shiny Poochiana and do some grinding. The thing is, I'm only going to grind here until I hit level 34. And here's the reason why. If you look at Altaria's moveset, it's going to learn Dragon Breath at level 35. I replace my Orin Berry with a Cherry Berry, and then I use the singular rare candy that I got from the Trick Master to level Altaria up. This is just because the erratic growth rate is still leveling up quite slow in this portion of the game, and I don't want to waste any more time. Now, I was relying on takedown for damage, but I think that Dragon Breath is going to be a much better option. After all, it will get the same type attack bonus, and it doesn't do recoil damage. Okay, so it one hits the Voltorb, one hits the Electrike, I move on to the Magneton, and on the first turn in battle against it, I know that it is going to try to use Thunder Wave as speed control. That means I'm going to get a free safeguard off, and then I can use Dragon Breath, which unfortunately does just under half. However, Magneton isn't really able to do that much damage to Altaria, and as a result I'm able to bring it to low red health, trigger a super potion, and now, since it's paralyzed, I've got it on the run. I burn through Watson's second super potion, continue using Dragon Breath, re-establish Safeguard, and then eventually I knock it out. Okay, so I still have green health left over for the Manectric. I can do this. I go for Dragon Breath, it does more than half, Manectric just uses Howl, also eats its Citrus Berry, that prevents the KO, but Watson is out of Super Potions, so I hit another Dragon Breath and finish him off. The time of 1 hour and 10 minutes coming out of the Watson split is honestly not very good, but I think that for Altaria, the hardest part of the game is behind it. After all, the erratic growth rate is only going to help going forward. On the next route, I pick up the TM for Secret Power. I think it is time to give up Sing. This move is not particularly useful now, especially because the gym leaders from here on out should be easier for Altaria. Okay, so now it's time to face Maxi at the top of Mount Chimney. Mighty Anna intimidates Altaria, lowering its attack stat, so I might as well just use Dragon Breath here because it's a special move. His lead isn't an issue after that. I polish the Zubat off with ease, and now it's time for his ace, Camerupt. Here's the thing though, this Pokemon has absolutely terrible moves if you are a flying type. That's because the move that's most scary for it to use is Magnitude. So in this case, defeating Maxi is completely trivial. In Laveridge Town, I make a quick stop picking up the Charcoal, and after that I head into the gym to face Flannery. I have a feeling that during this fight, Dragon Breath is going to carry me. I was hoping it would one hit the Nummel, but on the second turn I roll better damage and I do get the one hit. Next is Slugma, it's an obvious one hit. Camerupt is next, it establishes Sunny Day, and then I knock it out with a second hit. Okay, so I made it to the Torkoal relatively easily. Now here, I am going to set up Safeguard, because this thing loves to use Body Slam, and I really don't want to become paralyzed. After that, I start using Dragon Breath, and it's doing surprising amounts of damage, almost half. 
Then my second one rolls even better damage. So I have defeated Flannery and earned myself the fourth badge. Okay, so let's skip ahead to the Norman fight, because there isn't really anything to report in the next section of the game. Right now, Altaria is basically relying on Dragon Breath. Other than that, its moveset is not very good. However, once I take a victory here, my moveset is going to get dramatically better. I make it past his lead Spinda without getting paralyzed, which is quite lucky. Next is Vigoroth. I go for Dragon Breath. It does more than half. It just strikes back with Facade. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have been using Dragon Breath. It might have been better to go for Steel wing on the first turn, get a chance to have a defense boost, and then knock out with Dragon Breath. That way I would prevent the chance of paralyzing the Vigoroth and getting hit by a boosted facade. Anyways, I've made it to the Linoon. I go for Dragon Breath. It does more than half, causing paralysis. Linoon still hits a slash, doing a little bit of damage, and I finish it off on the next turn. Okay, so with that knockout, Altaria gets enough experience to level up to level 40, and here it has a chance of learning Dragon Dance. This move is fantastic. It raises your attack stat and also your speed. With base 80 speed, Altaria is not that fast, so this move is the perfect move for it to learn. I teach it in the place of safeguard, and then Norman sends in slacking. Okay, so first turn, I'm going to go for Dragon Breath because it is special, and it can't be countered. Slacking uses Yawn, which is fine because I have a Chesto Berry I planned for this. After my second Dragon Breath, Slacking heals itself with a Citrus Berry, and then it goes for Yawn again, which would be annoying, but in this case, my next Dragon Breath has enough damage to knock it out. So, I've defeated Norman and earned myself the Balance Badge. Normally, in most Generation 3 playthroughs, this is the point where the Pokémon starts getting access to a lot of really good moves. And for Altaria, this is the case. I can backtrack along the water routes past Duford Town, collecting semi-useful items along the way, a heart scale, and then a rare candy, and after that, I head into the abandoned ship where I pick up the TM for Ice Beam. Okay, so now we're going to check in with how many coins I can buy at the game corner, because I think it's worth showing that to this point in the playthrough, I have only been able to purchase 2,500 coins. There was no way for me to get Flamethrower for Watson. But now, I can finally buy the coins that I need to get the TM. I teach Ice Beam in the place of Steel Wing, and I'm going to hold on to Flamethrower for later on. Okay, so let's head north to Fort Tree City. Along the way, I have to face Brendan, but he is really not up to the task of defeating Altaria, so I take a quick victory here. And now, I've made it into the gym where Altaria feels very at home. It's time to face Winona. It was during this fight that I learned something about Altaria's move pool. A lot of its best moves are all special, and then its setup move, Dragon Dance, boosts its physical attack. Once I had knocked the Swablu out, I just want to take this thing out so it doesn't use Parish Song, I moved on to her Altaria and tried to set up here, but then using Secret Power doesn't even knock it out, so just attempting Ice Beam right away for 4 times damage definitely would have been the better play. After that, Ice Beam is better against the Tropius. It doesn't really matter what I do against the Pelipper, this thing is quite bad. It just is really annoying with Protect and Supersonic. And then once it's done, all that's left is Skarmory, and I really don't want to be using Secret Power here. I anticipate that a similar situation like this is going to play out in the future, where Dragon Dance seems seems like a good move to use for setup, but it isn't really boosting the moves that you want to be using anyways. Alright, so let's take some time to explore one of the most beautiful routes in the game. There are also a lot of really useful items for solo playthroughs here, so I'll just let this footage play. As I do, let's continue talking about Dragon Dance and how it can synergize with Altaria's moveset. So, I was just given the TM for Aerial Ace, which is a physical move, and then I'm going to get access to Earthquake later on during the plotline. Both of those moves synergize incredibly well with Dragon Dance. After I finished off Mount Pyre, I figured it was time to give up Secret Power in favor of Aerial Ace. And then I also backtracked to Fall Arbor Town to pick up the TM for a return. Against Maxi and the Magma Hideout, I noticed an interesting interaction. The Mighty Anna really wants to speed control Altaria with Scary Face, so I can take time to set up Dragon Dance. Also, I have a Person Berry, so when it eventually uses Swagger and boosts my attack, the confusion will be immediately cured, and then I can start my sweep. With plus 4 attack, all of his Pokémon are extremely easy to take care of. After that, we face off against the Stylish Mat. Once again, I could have used the same strategy here, but I just decided to sweep his team because this guy is all style, no substance. 
And with him out of the way, it is now time to prepare for Tate and Liza. Now, as I said in my last video, Shoal Cave is an excellent area to explore. It gives access to the Shell Bell, a fantastic recovery item, as well as the Never Melt Ice, which can boost Ice Beam's damage. Also, exploring this cave does yield one additional rare candy, and that's always nice to have. With those items collected, it is now time to head into Moss Deep Gym and face Tate and Liza. They lead with Claydol and Zatu. Because their ace Pokemon are rock types, I don't think that setting up Dragon Dance makes very much sense here. Instead, I'm just going to use Ice Beam to try and sweep through their team as quickly as possible. I use it against Zatu on the first turn, securing a one hit, and then Claydol uses Earthquake, knocking out my Abra, but of course doing nothing to my Altaria. There is actually no way to get into this battle if you don't have two Pokemon on your team. Next, I target the Claydol with Ice Beam, and I get a one hit. Alright, this is looking excellent. They send in Soul Rock. I go for Ice Beam. Now, Ice moves are not super effective against Rock-type Pokemon. That is a misconception that I used to have, and as a result, I only do about half. Still, this move is going to do more damage than Dragon Breath, and it also has a chance to freeze. Soul Rock eats its Citrus Berry, so that means it's going to take at least two more turns to knock out. And unfortunately for me, my next Ice Beam puts it on healing range, and that's what causes Altaria to lose this first battle. I tried the fight again, exploring an alternate strategy of setting up Dragon Dance and then using Aerial Ace to sweep. After all, this move does get the same type attack bonus. By the way, this isn't reflected in the bottom portion of the screen during this double battle. I'm just trying to keep things as clear as possible when I'm facing two opponents. Unfortunately for me, I get confused, and with my attack boosted, I'm dealing even more damage to myself, and that spells defeat in my second battle. So I've stockpiled a lot of rare candies until this point, and since I'm an erratic growth rate Pokemon, I'm not really worried about using these too soon, and as a result, I use a total of 8, taking me all the way up to level 60 before attempting Tate and Liza again. What this allows me to do is two-shot the Soul Rock so that they won't heal it with a Hyper Potion. After that, there's only two Pokemon left. I can two-shot the Lunatone with Ice Beam. Well, first I get put to sleep by Hypnosis, which is really annoying. It heals itself with a Citrus Berry. That might be out of KO range. All this while, Zatu is setting up Calm Mind and becoming scarier and scarier. Then the Zatu starts attacking, doing quite a bit of damage. It lowers my special defense, which is even worse. Lunatone sets up light screen. Okay, uh, this is probably not going to work out for me. I get hit by a critical hit psychic, and then Altaria doesn't wake up, and the Zatu finishes me off. Okay, so resetting to before I use my rare candies, I'm just going to go along the sea to Pacific Log Town and level up to level 53 before using 7 rare candies to get back to level 60 to attempt to Tate and Liza again. This time, I'm going to use a Chesto Berry in case I get put to sleep with Hypnosis. However, in this case, the Clay Doll sets up Light Screen, and that means I can't one-hit it. As a result, they deal a lot of damage to Altaria before the Lunatone even comes out, and that's another defeat. Okay, so it is finally time to use the Shell Bell. Because I'm dealing a lot of damage every turn with Ice Beam, I think that the recovery is really going to help throughout this long battle. It looks like I get a lucky freeze on the Lunatone here, but it defrosts right away. It's a bit annoying. It's setting up Calm Mind, so I'm trying to target it to take it out so that it doesn't get too set up and then knock me out very quickly. However, eventually I realize that I can just one-shot the Clay Doll. The Soul Rock comes out, and after I wake up from sleep, I two-shot it. All that's left is the Lunatone, and it puts me to sleep. Fortune is not smiling upon me in this fight. Making matters worse, it establishes light screen, but then I wake up, hit Ice Beam, and Altaria gets a critical hit. So with that, I've earned myself the seventh badge and finally a boost to my special attack and my special defense. After this battle, of course, I have to withdraw my HM users from the PC, and then I head to the Moss Deep Space Center for a battle alongside Steven Stone. Sometimes this fight is a little bit tricky, but today it's not a problem at all. After that, during the plot line, I have to face Archie. He is quite easy. And then Rayquaza saves the day, calming down Groudon and Kyogre. And with that, I am ready to face the final gym leader in Hoenn. Let's take on Juan. Okay, going into this battle, I want to make a quick aside. Isn't it nice that we haven't used Hidden Power or Return yet with Altaria? Its moveset is really refreshing. Now for the start of this battle, I think that I misplayed slightly by not bringing in the Person Berry. I could have used that to set up Dragon Dance and then sweep with Aerial Ace, because the Love Disc really isn't scary unless it confuses you. Anyways, it's not an issue to take out. Next, Juan sends in his Ace. Kingdra, and I really don't know what I was thinking here. 
I go for Dragon Dance? Why didn't I just try to one-hit it with Dragon Breath? Like, I have no idea what I was doing. All this time, the Kingdra is setting up double team, so I guess that's nice because now I can use Aerial Ace to knock it out and ah, oh, great, it survives. So I'm gonna have to attack it again to finish it off. Next, he sends in Celio, and now with plus three attack, I am able to one-shot this thing, the following Whiskash with a critical hit, and all he has left is Crawdont. By the way, I am doing a playthrough with this thing on the channel next month. It is a fluctuating growth rate Pokemon, and I'm really curious to see how that plays out. In this case, it is no match for my Altaria, and I take an easy victory over Juan. Wally's next, of course. It is Altaria versus Altaria here. I was pretty sure that his was going to set up Dragon Dance, so I went for my own Dragon Dances in response. After that, Aerial Ace knocks out the Altaria and then the Delcaddy. Against Magneton, I used Aerial Ace. I really shouldn't have. I go for Ice Beam on the next turn. It doesn't do very much, but it is my best option. Eventually, I do manage to knock the bolts out, and from there, the rest of his team is easy to sweep. With him out of the way, it's now time to take on the Hoenn Elite Four. Up first is Sydney, and for Altaria, he is not going to be an issue because I have access to Aerial Ace, which bypasses accuracy checks. In combination with setup from Dragon Dance, I should just be able to sweep his entire team. That's because the first Mighty Yenna gives me a lot of time by setting up Sand Attack three times in total. By the way, I do want to mention something here that is different in Generation 3 when compared to Generation 1. When you get hit by one Sand Attack, it lowers moves that have 100% accuracy down to 7 75% accuracy. Whereas in Generation 1, it lowers you all the way down to 66% accuracy with the first sand attack. In Generation 3, a second sand attack takes you down to 60% accuracy, and then a third one will take me down to 50% accuracy. Of course, my Altaria is just set up now with plus 4 attack, and because I have Aerial Ace, I'm able to one-shot the Mighty Enna. Up next, he sends in his Ace, Absol. Aerial Ace, of course, gets the one hit, and from there, this fight gets a lot easier. I one-hit the Shift Tree with super effective damage, as well as the Cacturn, and now all that's left is the Crawdont. Aerial Ace hits, and Sydney is defeated. Next is Elite Four member Phoebe. She leads with a Dusclops, and this thing always uses Protect on the first turn, so I can get a free Dragon Dance in. After that, I really don't want it to set up Curse, so I'm going to use Aerial Ace to take it out. Unfortunately, I don't do enough damage. It confuses me, then goes for Protect, stopping my next Aerial Ace. It tries again, but fails. I snap out of Confusion and knock it out. Okay, so at least it didn't use Curse. Next, she sends in her Ace Dusclops. This thing has a really good move set, by the way. Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. However, I figured that I could tank even one Ice Beam, so I set up Dragon Dance one more time to improve my damage. It goes for Ice Beam, which does less than a third. My next Aerial Ace takes it to red. I recover a little bit of health with the Shell Bell. It hits another Ice Beam, taking me down under half. Restores some health with the Citrus Berry, but not enough to save it. With the Dusclops down, now I'm gonna win, because both of the Bayonets and Sableye are not particularly tanky. I sweep through all of them with one hit each, and now I'm moving on to Glacia. Theoretically, this should be the hardest League member for Altaria to face. After all, I take four times damage from all ice moves, and every single one of her Pokémon is an ice type with an ice move. Luckily for me, the Celio that leads knows Hail, which it loves setting up on the first turn, and then Ice Ball, which is not particularly good. I figured that this would give me time to set up a little bit with Dragon Dance and then sweep with Aerial Ace, but plus two isn't enough to one-shot her lead, and as a result, I am in a really bad position by the time I move on to her first Glalie. I get pelted by Hail, Aerial Ace just barely doesn't get the one hit. Glalie uses Icy Wind, gets a critical hit, and Altaria goes down. Alright, so I need more damage than Aerial Ace gives me, so I'm gonna now teach Return in the place of Dragon Breath. After all, I can use Ice Beam for Wallace, and I can relearn this move later on with a Heart Scale if I really want it. This time against the first Celio, I take one extra turn to set up, improving my damage even more, and then return one shots. However, I don't have very much health left over for the rest of the fight, so I'm hoping that it's going to be a sweep from here. I one-shot the next Glalie, as well as the following Seal. Her second Glalie might survive, but no, return does enough damage. 
and that means all that's left is wall rain. I go for return, and unfortunately it does not do enough to knock it out. The Ice Walrus strikes back with Ice Beam and finishes me off. Okay, but I was really close to getting the KO there, so if I give Altaria the Silk Scarf, I might actually have enough damage to knock it out. The fight plays out largely the same way. I arrive at the wall rain once again with yellow health. I go for return with the boosted damage from the Silk Scarf. I still don't get the one hit and Altaria goes down. Okay, so I think it'll be nice to use two rare candies to take Altaria up to level 70. This way I am above a damage rounding threshold, giving my damage a significant boost, and I also have the Silk Scarf. But will this be enough to knock the wall rain out? And the answer is yes. So Glacia is defeated, and now I am moving on to Drake. Because the first Shellgun loves to use Protect, I might as well go for a Dragon Dance. Like, it doesn't really do anything because I'm going to be prioritizing Ice Beam for the majority of this fight. I knock his lead out in one hit, Altaria is next. I get so much overkill here with a crit. Anyways, yeah, it doesn't stand a chance. Next is Flygon. It also takes four times damage from Ice Beam, so I polish it off. He sends in Salamence, which lowers my attack stat. And then Ice Beam one-shots it. Yeah, this fight is, uh, this fight's really easy. <laughs> However, Kingdra is last, and I don't really have good damage against it. The thing that's going to do the most is return. That Dragon Dance at the beginning of the battle actually helped me cancel out the Intimidate from the Salamence, so I guess it was useful. I go for return, it gets a critical hit, and Kingdra just barely survives. It lands Smokescreen, lowering my accuracy. However, my next return hits, taking it just above half. And then I figured that I should play conservatively and use Aerial Ace so that I ensure that I'm getting the hits. I don't finish it off. Kingdra goes for Dragon Dance. And once again, my first Dragon Dance was useful because now I am outspeeding. However, before I finish it off, Drake uses a full restore. But because I'm faster, I get two more Aerial Aces in, taking it back down to red health. Kingdra uses Dragon Dance, raising its speed, but I am still faster, hit Aerial Ace, and with that, Drake is defeated. Now, before I face Wallace, I'm going to upgrade my moveset. I thought that I had Hidden Power Electric, but it turns out I went with Hidden Power Dark at the beginning of the challenge, so whoops. I guess I'll just teach Rest in the place of Hidden Power and go into the fight with this moveset. Wallace leads with Waylord. Now, I figured that I could get in one Dragon Dance and survive a Blizzard, but uh, no, I cannot because it gets a critical hit. Okay, so let's try that again. Maybe if it doesn't get a crit, I will survive, and the answer is yes. However, with just one Dragon Dance, my return doesn't even get the Waylord into red health. Then it hits another Blizzard, and Altaria goes down. Okay, I'll use one rare candy to take Altaria up to level 73 over a damage rounding threshold. I then thought that I maybe could skip the setup and just two hit with return, but unfortunately it does less than half. Waylord sets up Rain Dance, I guess that's good. My next return doesn't knock it out, it hits Blizzard, taking me down to yellow health. And then Wallace uses a full restore, and at this point I had started to realize that I think I am fishing for a Blizzard miss. Unfortunately, in the next battle I do not get it because Blizzard gets a critical hit and takes Altaria out in a single turn. Okay, so I'm going to use my remaining rare candy up to level 74, like maybe it'll help. And here's the strategy. I'm going to use Dragon Dance twice and hope that Blizzard misses once. And in this case, it does. Now with plus two attack, I can use return to knock the Waylord out in a single hit and move on to the Tentacruel for the first time. Now against this water poison type, I do need to be careful because it does have ice beam. However, its defense stat is much lower than its special defense stat, but it is still higher than Waylord's defense, so it could survive my return. I go for it and I get the KO. All right, that's perfect. Next, Wallace sends in Milotic. Of course, it knows Ice Beam. Its defense is even higher than Tentacruel's, but once again, Return secures the one hit. And then things take a turn for the worse, because Wallace sends in Gyarados, which triggers Intimidate and lowers my attack stat. I go for Return. In this case, though, I get a critical hit and knock it out in one turn. Okay, so that's good. Next is Ludicolo. I have super effective damage in the form of Aerial Ace, but before that, I'm going to take my time and use rest to heal up. 
After all, this thing loves to spam double team, and that isn't going to help it against my Aerial Ace. I hit and knock it out in a single turn. All that's left is Whisk Cash. I go for return, it gets a critical hit, and with that, Altaria has defeated Wallace. It did so with a time of 2 hours 28 minutes and 53 seconds, with 18 resets at level 75. This took 8 hours and 39 minutes of game time. But the playthrough is not over yet because we have to defeat Steven Stone, and for him I'm going to update my moveset once again. After all, a move like Return is really useless against his Rock and Steel types, so I'm going to teach Flamethrower in its place. After that, I think it is finally time to utilize Earthquake with Altaria. There's probably a case to be made that I should have had this on my moveset far earlier, but I really wanted to save it for Steven and give myself some flexibility throughout the league. Now I teach it in the place of Aerial Ace, and with that, Altaria is ready for its final test. Alright, so I think that Steven is a little bit of a weird case for Altaria. While I would like to use Flamethrower most of the time, Earthquake is actually going to be the better option because it gets set up from Dragon Dance. I have Rest on my moveset so that I can use it to cure Toxic after Skarmory sets it up, and this will give me time to use Dragon Dance to boost my attack. After getting to plus 3, Skarmory poisons me, and then I use Flamethrower to see how much damage it's going to do, and it doesn't get the KO, it only takes it down to orange health. I finish it off on the next turn, and then Steven sends in Claydol. Okay, so this thing isn't very good. Its best move against me is Ancient Power, and it's not doing that much damage, even though it's super effective. Also, this move only has 5 PP, so I figured that I could stall it out, and once it's run out of PP, the Claydol will actually not be able to hit me because his only other damage dealing move is Earthquake. What this means is that potentially I could get fully set up here. However, there is another issue, because I wanted to see how much damage Flamethrower is doing, and it is doing very little damage. Like, I don't actually know if I'm going to be able to knock this thing out if Steven keeps using full restores on it. Luckily though, I think his AI only allows him to use one healing item per Pokemon, so I do end up knocking it out and I move on to the Cradily. Against it, Earthquake is neutral, but I do so little damage around a third. Luckily, for whatever reason, the Cradily doesn't go for Ancient Power, and I do manage to take it out, so then Steven sends in Armaldo. I go for Earthquake, it does less than half. I get hit by Ancient Power, which causes the Omni Boost. Okay, I know why I'm doing so little. It's because their team had a Reflect in place. Luckily, it's worn off now, and uh, just in time for that, I switch back into using Flamethrower, which does so little damage, and then Ancient Power knocks me out. Yeah, so that was not very good play. All right, so obviously what I need to do is just set up completely to get plus six attack. And then I just need to time things better against the Claydol so there's no reflect in place for the following Pokemon. I can actually do this quite easily when the Claydol is on red health after Steven has used one full restore. Then I can take it out with Flamethrower and move on to the Cradley. There's only one more turn of reflect left over, so I do half on my first hit with Earthquake, but then it wears off and my next one gets the KO. Armaldo time, I go for Earthquake. It one hits, it's time for Aggron. Earthquake does four times damage, so obviously it takes it out. And with that, I have made it to Steven's ace, Metagross. I go for Earthquake, and I take it down. So, Altaria clocks in with a final time of 2 hours, 36 minutes, and 49 seconds, with 19 resets at level 77. This took 9 hours and 2 minutes of game time. Alright, so how do these results stack up against all of the other Pokemon Emerald runs that I have done to date? Well, if we consider real-time finish, a 2 hour, 36 minutes, and 49 second time is just slightly slower than Absol. And by slightly slower, I mean by 2 seconds. However, I do think there's a disclaimer here, which is that I played absolutely terribly with Absol, and I'm also playing Altaria like six months later, which does give it an advantage. So I do think that Absol is the better Pokemon. If we consider game time finish, then Altaria was faster than Torkoal, but slower than Blaziken. Overall, this Pokemon is quite middle of the pack. I do think that the erratic growth rate really hurts it in a solo challenge. That's just because Roxanne is so brutal at the beginning of the game, and after that, Altaria has already lost so much time that it just isn't able to compete with Pokemon like Flygon or Milotic. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this precursory look into the erratic growth rate. I am so excited to try some fluctuating growth rate Pokemon next month. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Now, if you made it this far, you're incredible. 
I'll see you in my next video.